Hey everyone, Zach here from Windows Central and welcome back to another video. Now today we're taking a look at Windows 11 build 22518. This build includes a number of notable changes and enhancements over the last preview build which was 22509. So it's been a week. It's funnily enough we've had two builds uh, in a row with actual notable features worth taking a look at. So um, let's not waste any time. So diving straight in, you may have already noticed it, but down here in the bottom left hand corner, Microsoft has added a new button. Well, it's not te technically not a new button, but it's a new placement for the button. The widgets panel button is now here in the bottom left hand corner, and it has been updated with actual useful information. Previously, it was just a static icon with a little animation that played when you clicked on it, but now it actually gives you information. And right now it's showing me the current weather 10 degrees and cloudy and if I click on this button here it will bring up my widgets panel where I can move things around like normal or read the news if I've customized that and so on and so forth so the widgets panel itself hasn't changed just the entry points for the widgets panel has uh, they've essentially brought back that weather icon thing that they had on Windows 10 uh, but that was down here next to the system tray uh, because Windows 11 has an empty space here on the bottom left hand side why not put that information over there instead so that's exactly what they've done and I really do like this change it makes that empty space a little bit more useful uh, and it also declutters the system pinned apps here as well so there's no longer five system pinned apps it's now four by default with the widgets icon over here uh, and I much prefer this layout. Now what isn't so great about this implementation is Microsoft has also brought back the automatic opening of the widgets panel when you hover over the button down here. Please don't do this Microsoft, nobody wants to see the widgets panel. I don't want you opening it automatically when I accidentally hover over the button. Please allow me to disable this. I feel like most of the buttons on the taskbar should just open when you click on them, not open when you hover on them. None of the buttons over here do it, none of these buttons do. The only buttons that do are search and task view, but these are acceptable because they're mini versions of those features. If I click on search, it gives me a big version. If I hover over search, it gives me a little version. That that is acceptable. Opening the entire widgets panel just by hovering on the button is unacceptable. What this should do is just show me the weather. It should pop up the weather widget rather than the entire thing if I hover over it. Just show me the weather. That's all I want to see. I never want to see anything else in the widgets panel. It is all useless to me. Just show me the weather and that's all I need to see. But anyway, yeah, that's the thing. Hopefully Microsoft gives us the option to disable that or choose how that works in the future. But right now it just opens up the entire widgets panel, which is uh, not my favorite implementation. But yeah, that is, that is a quick look at the new placement for the widgets panel. I much prefer this position of the button uh, and the information it displays. It's really cool that it's now showing um, actual information, 11 degrees and cloudy right now, which is useful to me. And I actually can just see that whenever I'm using my PC and that's pretty cool. Now, for those of you wondering what this looks like if you have your taskbar left aligned, it essentially just puts the button back to where it used to be, but the icon is now updated to show the weather. So if we set, select left here, you'll see that the weather is here now rather than in the far left and um, it still opens up the widgets panel and stuff. So that's how that looks if you were wondering, but for the most part, I think most people will prefer it in this very far left corner because it can show more information and keeps things looking balanced and tidy on the taskbar. Pretty nice. Up next, Microsoft has added a new wallpaper spotlight feature, which is essentially bringing over the Bing daily image from the lock screen to your desktop. Uh, if you jump into settings and go down to personalization, we can go into a background here. You can see we've already selected spotlight collection uh, and that will pull in a daily image and enable this icon on the desktop, which allows you to right click and switch to next picture vote this picture up or say you're not a fan of this picture. So if I didn't like this wallpaper, I could just switch to the next one and that will give me a different wallpaper from Bing, which is very nice indeed. Really do like this feature, especially for those who aren't too keen on searching for their own custom wallpapers. Just let Microsoft do it for you, which is pretty nice. And this will update every day with a new one automatically. And again, if you don't like the one that it's chosen, you can come up here, right click and select switch to next picture. And that will introduce another picture on your desktop, which is pretty sweet. Now for this next demo, I've had to move to a new PC because for some reason the feature wouldn't work on my actual demo machine. Uh, but if we jump into settings here, go down to accessibility and then scroll down to speech, there is a new feature called voice access, which allows me to control my PC using my voice. Now Microsoft says this feature is only available for those in the United States speaking English. As you can probably tell, I do not speak American English, so this may not work entirely correctly for me uh, in this demo, but we'll give it a go and see how well, it lasts listening to someone who is British and not American. So uh, let's turn this on here and give it a go. So now it's enabled, there's this bar along the top here and we have a number of options. We can select our default microphone, manage automatic options, and then a number of other things as well. But what we want to do here is uh, close out this window and enable the microphone icon, which will enable voice access and begin listening for commands. So uh, let's do that now. 
Open Start. Click Edge. One. Snap Edge to right. Open File Explorer. Snap File Explorer to left. Show Desktop. Click Start. Open Settings. Move Mouse Down. Move Mouse Down 10. Move Mouse Down 50. Move Mouse Left 13. <laughs> Move Mouse Left 20. Click. Click Bluetooth. Three. Scroll down. Scroll down again. Scroll down. Scroll down two. Scroll down. Minimize. So you get the idea. You can actually um, control your PC entirely with your voice. Uh, which is pretty nice. It, it's not very intuitive. You do have to sort of figure out what commands work and what commands don't. You can't just speak to it like a human being. Um, but that's, you know, this is early days. This may be built out over time where it becomes a little bit more natural in regards to actually communicating with it. Uh, but for now, it's a great start for a feature that I think is going to help lots of people. Again, this is only available right now for those in the United States speaking American English. But you get the point and it's pretty cool. In fact, I want to try and do the next demo here using entirely voice access where possible, of course. Uh, so if we re-enable the mic here, I want to show off the new notepad because there's a finally a new notepad app which I think looks really nice uh, so let's do that open start click notepad this is the new notepad why are you executing for some reason it got stuck straight away uh it's trying to execute the command this is the new notepad when what i wanted it to do is type this is the new notepad uh let's try that again type this is the new notepad this is the new notepad turn off microphone All right, it appears I have tripped up the uh, the the voice access feature. So um, there you go. I did I did try to show off the, the feature in more in a real case scenario, but it did not work. So let's turn this off for now. You know, this is pre-release software, um, so we can't really blame it. Plus, I'm not speaking in an American accent, so I'm already at sort of treating it poorly in this preview state. But hey, there you go. That was a quick look at voice access. And now we can actually move on to the Notepad app. This is the brand new Notepad app. And as you can see, uh, it has dark mode, which is a huge upgrade for the Notepad app. For years now, it's been around, well, since the first version of Windows, I believe, um, but it never had a dark mode, and now it finally does. And as you can see, the rest of it's also been updated with the Windows 11 design language in mind. We have rounded corners everywhere, nice animations, and we even have now a settings page for the Notepad app itself where we can enable light or dark theme. Here's what it looks like in light theme, in case you were wondering, which is pretty nice. And uh, we also have font options here as well as per usual. Not all of the dialogues have been updated yet. If we go down to say page setup, that still pops up uh, a really old Windows dialogue as well as um, print, also putting up a super old dialogue. But the actual main UI here has been updated and I think it looks really good. If I could spell really. So there you are. That is a quick look at note, the new notepad and indeed a quick look at build 22518. Thank you so much for watching and we shall see you in the next one. Bye bye.